Recently, I've been talking a lot about user experience, especially on home pages, service pages, and e-commerce product pages. I'm basically answering the question of how can you have this long form SEO optimized content on your page that might be recommended by a tool like Surfer SEO without destroying your website with a wall of text that no one's actually going to buy from. I'm briefly going to walk you through some of the fundamental theories in terms of page design for optimizing user experience, but stick around to the end of this video where I'm going to give you some more, shall we say, creative shortcuts where using tools and automation, you can actually maximize those user signals better than all your competitors with the very best page layouts and designs. Now, there are plenty of ways around that. I talked about accordions in the last video and how these can be badly set up where if you put the content in the accordion, it can be hidden from Google and not actually give you any benefit, but there are ways to implement it correctly. And that's exactly what happened in this example. This was an e-com website where we produced this long form page of text for the homepage and they kept their beautiful layouts at the top, but then down the bottom, we just had a small accordion that opened out into the 3000 words of long form text. And that combined with an effective link building strategy has enabled this client to go from around 800 visitors a month in August, 2023 to 25,000 visitors per month in September, 2024. I also encourage clients to try and weave the content back through their existing homepage layout. So this is a good example where we've got plenty of nice visual widgets, but they still contain rich content and text. And then the further down we go, the more detail we get. So this is a way of presenting that content for Google and indeed for humans without actually stuffing it into an accordion. But the topic of user experience goes far beyond that. And what myself and many other experts I've spoken to all say is that in order to get to the top of page one, it really is all about content and backlinks. As long as you've got a technically sound website, if you're interested in getting these results for yourself, then I'll leave a link below and just go to seojesus.com slash apply. And you'll see a breakdown of our service where we focus very much on deliverables that we know provide ROI. So content backlinks both delivered at volume and at quality, but also with the supporting consultancy and technical advice in order to give you the best chance of success. So there are a few other case studies on the page. These are taken from actual search console accounts, not just random Ahrefs screenshots. And then you can apply at the bottom and we'll aim to get back to you within 24 hours. Even if we don't think you're a great fit, we'll try and point you in the right direction of what you should be doing to get maximum ROI for your business. But once you've done the content and the backlinks and you've got up to the top three of Google, then staying there becomes a slightly different ball game. And actually the user experience comes much more into play. And this is where you can get much more concerned about your dwell time, your bounce rates, basically how people are interacting with your website. So Google's got a lot of data on this. They've got the Chrome browser. They can see if you go to a website and come back again to the search result. So it's pretty easy for Google to assess which websites are really satisfying the user's needs and intent. So, so at this stage, you might want to play around more with different user experience, whether you're putting videos on the page. If you do that, make sure they load fast, enable asynchronous deferred loading so they load after the rest of the page content. Then you've got calculators, widgets, things you can interact with. And of course, the classic best principle for conversion rate optimization, just a big buy now button, if that's the kind of user intent you're serving. And it's for this reason that you may find you do move up to the top three but then there's a lot of volatility there and especially trying to unseat that number one result can be extremely difficult, but it is possible. And of course it is very rewarding. You might think top three is done, but the fact is position one gets double the traffic position two, and that gets double the traffic of position three. So even if you're at number four, three, it's definitely worth it for you to get up to number one. And the user experience is a key part of that on top of your existing fundamentals. Now you notice that's exactly what I've achieved with my recent one page website case study. This was a lead generation website where after doing the content and doing the links, we basically just left it for a period of months until suddenly it jumped up to number one. And crucially it stayed number one ever since the end of June. So it's now sticking around really nicely. Now, yes, we've done all we can to make sure there is a seamless user experience on the page, but there is a bit of a secret weapon I've included here. Now, many of you will know I'm a big fan of CTR manipulation where basically you get a robot using unique 4G proxies tailored to the location you've set to search your keywords, click on your result, and then hang around on your website and even click around a bit. Now, it is one of those shiny objects where people might think this is the answer to all their problems. And in SEO, as with all marketing, there's no single cheat code that's going to solve everything for you. But CTR manipulation in particular is one of my favorite little tricks 
to just add an extra 20% on top of what I'm already doing. Now, performing accurate A-B tests with Google and SEO to try and work out what's actually working can be very difficult. But back in October last year, I was in a Parasite SEO competition and people were really struggling to unseat me. I was at number one with a LinkedIn Pulse article and other people were doing other LinkedIn Pulse articles and building more backlinks, doing more work than me. The only thing it seemed that they weren't doing that I was doing was very aggressive CTR manipulation. So I think in this example, I was sending around 50 clicks per day, which is very aggressive. Normally for your own website, you should take your total monthly traffic and you don't want to send any more than 10% of that via a robot. Now, what I noticed was my server actually crashed on around day three, something like that. And in that time, I dropped down a few positions. As soon as I got it back up again and restarted the robot, suddenly I moved back up to position one. So that's not infallible by any means. It was a Parasite article on LinkedIn. But generally speaking, from that experience, I would say there was a correlation between CTR manipulation and ranking. So I get people from both sides saying either this is a scam, it doesn't work, it's pointless. And other people saying this is all we do, it's really important. We don't build backlinks anymore, we just do CTR manipulation. So in my mind, the way I see it is once you're all set up, the software does cost a bit to get set up. So I like to use CTR Booster. It's around $300 when you first buy it, and then it's $15 a month. And then the proxies are around $70 a month. So you only need one or two of those. So it's about $300 to set up. And then the ongoing running cost is around $90 per month. So obviously that's not nothing. It depends on where you're at in your journey. But if you're at a point where you're spending hundreds and thousands on backlinks and you've got a scaled operation, you've got a funnel that's working for you, then $90 a month to run CTR manipulation is nothing. So that's kind of my position, especially as we offer this at scale to clients as well. In my mind, sending a small amount of CTR traffic basically incurs no additional cost because we're doing it at scale and there's a good chance of some benefit there. Maybe not a big benefit, but some benefit. So that's exactly what we've been doing here. It's only a low traffic website, but throughout the period, we've been driving a small amount of traffic via CTR manipulation so that we know there's a good baseline there of high retention engaged traffic that's clicking on that result and hanging around engaging with the website. Would it have worked if we hadn't done everything else, the content, the domain, the backlinks? Of course not. And CTR manipulation isn't going to do anything. The tool's not even going to work if you're not already ranking for the keywords quite high up. But if you find you're at the bottom of page one or at the middle of page one, then it could be that extra factor you need just to get that edge to push you up. You can even configure the tools to click on one of your competitors and then immediately click back to go back to the search results and then click on your result and stay on it. So that Google can see the competitor above you did not provide a good user experience, but you did. And therefore you may well outrank them. Now I've been recommending CTR manipulation for well over a year now. Like I say, not a game changer, but a useful tool for your toolkit. So for me, even if it provides an extra five or 10%, maybe even 20%, then I'm happy to do it. And I think there's very little downside risk involved. But those people come back to me saying, they can't set up the software correctly. They're not sure how to use it. The tools are quite technical. So it's for that reason, a couple of months ago, I recorded a full course on everything you need to do to download the software, set it up on your server, and then implement it correctly to actually run a campaign for your site or your clients. And that includes local GMBs or Google business profiles rather, and your own website. So the course goes into depth on why and the theory behind of why it works, how it works, looking at Google's internal documents that have been publicly shared, how to set up your servers and proxies correctly because you install a Windows VPS and suddenly everything goes wrong. And then how you actually set up your locations, your keywords, and the correct way to implement CTR manipulation for the best results. So that's exactly what you can see here. I keep saying with this website, a key part of this was time. In the beginning, we did the content, we did the backlinks. But since then, you can see from around March onwards from the blue line, we didn't really build any more links. You can see from the green dots that there weren't any major content changes in that time. So we basically just left this site to grow. But in the meantime, we had CTR manipulation running in the background. And ever since it moved up to number one, it has stayed at number one. And while that could be well down to the work we've already done and it's just a good website, I still think there's a genuine benefit there to having the CTR manipulation running and that could well have stopped it from falling behind. So in a high value niche like this, $90 per month, this site might made me $5,000 in the first month it was monetized. So it's easily worth me spending $90 a month just for the reassurance that CTR manipulation is giving me that extra 10, 20% edge that's keeping me at position one. So if you're doing everything else right, you've done your content, your technicals, your backlinks, and you've improved the user experience, you're in the top five, 
and you're still struggling to just get ahead, get an edge, then you might want to consider CTR manipulation in moderation, in a controlled way. No more than 10% of your overall traffic and ideally to pages that are already receiving organic traffic. It's about that gentle push that can make all the difference. Don't go mad and don't expect miracles. But personally, I'm convinced I'm getting big benefits from this.